Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique and I'm very, very excited today because I get to show you, introduce you to the brand new Pro-Q 3 by FabFilter. I'm sure you know about Pro-Q 2. It's world renowned for being one of the best virtual digital EQs out there. FabFilter always come correct with any of their plugins, but I think Pro-Q 2 is probably their most well-known. Pro-Q 3 is a big update to it, and they're gonna continue being at the forefront of this thing because it's just so dope now. There are a bunch of new features. There are a bunch of updated and improved algorithms behind the scenes. There's a lot, lot going on here, but for this quick intro video, I'm just gonna walk you through some of the things that I'm most excited to see. And I'm gonna start off with, of course, the dynamic EQ possibilities. So this is probably gonna be the thing that most people are gonna be talking about, and with good reason, because Pro-Q2 was a static EQ, it did a fantastic job as that, but adding in the dynamic functionality of a dynamic EQ inside of the Pro-Q3, huge, huge step up. So let's just come in here for a second and I'm gonna come in and just go to clean. Oh, yeah, clean. This gives me a clean slate, right? Now I can add any points that I want. So if I just click and drag up, I've got a static EQ boost right here. And I've got a lot of different filter types to choose from. And if I wanna make it a dynamic EQ node, all I need to do is click on this outside here. There's a gain slider right here. So I'm boosting the gain, attenuating the gain. And if I wanna make it a, a dynamic EQ that attenuates the sound as the sound crosses the threshold, all I need to do is click right here on this outer band and pull to the left. And you can see a very, very sexy graphic here going below the EQ node here, and that's telling me that it's gonna get attenuated by that much after the audio crosses the threshold. And if I go ahead and play the audio, Sure enough, that's what happens. So this can attenuate, but it can also expand if you just click and go uh, above or to the right of the center here. So now it's gonna be expanding that audio when it crosses the threshold. So one thing that I really, really like right off the bat is how easy it is to engage the dynamic EQ. There's no clicking extra buttons. You just click, drag to the left or the right of center here, and boom, we've got dynamic functionality. Now, another thing that I really, really like is that it sets the auto threshold for you. And that's just like an extra step that you usually don't have to jump into because FabFilter know what they're doing and the intelligent algorithms inside of here just kind of know where the threshold might wanna be. But if you wanna get in, you just gotta click this auto button right here and boom, you've got your threshold control right here. So you decide what the threshold is to engage the dynamic EQ uh, attenuation or, or expansion. Very, very cool, very, very sleek. I love the, autom uh, the like the animation here of the, the GUI, how everything lights up and great. And it's just so great. So the fun doesn't stop there. As I said, you have all these different filter types, but you also have the ability to per filter, and you can have up to 24 filters, that's the same as the Pro-Q2. Per filter can be left, right, stereo, mid, or side, okay? So let's say I just want to attenuate this centered audio here, boom click it, drag it to the left, and now I'm only gonna be attenuating the centered audio for this frequency range. And it might be better if I go ahead and just solo this drum loop for a second. All right, so that's super dope. Now there's another thing that's really, really cool and it's a big workflow improvement. Let's say I want to you know, play with this frequency position, but I also want to be using the side as well. All I need to do is click the scissors right here and boom, you can see that it's added a second node here. There are in fact two nodes in the same frequency position and now I can come into the other one here and go to the side and maybe give the side some expansion or something. Come over here like this, you know what I'm saying? Okay, this isn't a real world case. I'm just showing you that this little thing right here will actually duplicate the filter's frequency position and just change it to the opposite. So if it's mid, it will make a side. If I'm over here on left, and if I get rid of this other one here and go ahead and click that, it will give me a right. So now I can you know, adjust the that frequency position differently for the left and the right channels. Very, very cool. So let's talk about the next thing, which is frequency masking and being able to see multiple spectrums in the same uh, GUI here. So I've got the, Pro-Q3 on these drums down here. And if I click right here, it says Analyzer. 
Uh, it says Pro-Q where if I double click, I can actually type in drums. So now I've named this instance of the Pro-Q3 drums. And if I take another instance of Pro-Q3, let's come over here and put it on, let's say the bass and come down here again, you can see that it says drums right here. And if I stay organized and type bass here, now when I play these, You can see, I can see the frequency of the drums and I can see the bass in here. And what's really cool is if I select this, I can actually see them both inside of the big spectrum over here. Now, right off the bat, that's already very, very good. It's gonna help me make better mix decisions, but you might notice over here, there's some like glowing red going on. Let's check it out. That's what's called frequency masking. So there are frequency conflicts right there. I think they call it frequency colliding uh, for the Pro-Q3. But what it's telling me is visually, it's giving me actionable information about where there are frequency conflicts inside of my mix between these two channels. It's saying, hey, the kick drum and the bass drum have too much frequency content right here in the frequency spectrum, and you need to make a decision based on that information if you wanna leave it there and possibly cause some phase cancellation or muddying of the mix, or if you wanna actually carve one out using Pro-Q3's incredible filter notes. So, absolutely phenomenal, right? And we can do that as many times as we want, which is gonna make things a lot easier to work with and make mixing and mastering easier. So if I bring it on here and put it on this, Stabs over here, if I click here, and again, you wanna rename so you can stay organized. So now you can see the bass and the drums down here in the mini spectrum, and if I wanna see any of them uh, bigger together with the main spectrum up here, I just gotta click it. And if I don't wanna see either again, I just gotta go ahead and click external spectrum off. So if you can see right here, we've got a lot of frequency masking going on right here in this frequency range. So again, actionable information to help you make better mix decisions. I love it, I love it, I love it. So let's talk about a few more great features inside of here. Uh, filter nodes, uh, up to 24, like I said, and you've got the tilt shelf now, which is super great. If I go ahead and just boost this, you'll see that it's got that nice uh, frequency tilt there, and if I can, you know, change the curve inside of here. Very, very dope. And obviously you can invert it, make it bigger. And also if I zoom out here, if I make it bigger, you'll see that this is actually automated over here. It stays relative to whatever you can see on the screen. This is actually gonna zoom in or zoom out, but if you wanna come over, you can zoom in again. Obviously that'd be too much because I can't see the tops, but look, it actually zooms out for me as I make it down and make it a little bit smaller. So super dope. Again, so much going on here. And there's something else I wanna to touch on too, and it's this right here. If I hover over this, you can actually get the spectrum grab. And if I enable that and go ahead and play the audio here, let's go back to the drums for a second, in fact, and come over here. So what I'm gonna do is let the audio play, and as the spectrum is happening, I'm gonna hover my mouse down here just for a little bit, and you're gonna see what happens. But before we do that, we wanna make sure that it's on. So I'm gonna come in here and boom. So let's see what happens. So you can see that it's actually taking those peaks and making them static. And this is very, very helpful. Let's say I wanna turn down the bass. All I can do now is come over right here and look, just turn it down, boom. And now it's gonna put that filter note in there and then I have the full access to everything else and I can turn down the kick or I can turn down some resonance if there are any resonant peaks. Again, just hover over down here and it's gonna happen. You know, Maybe this resonant peak right here, if I wanna pull down that hi-hat, Done. If I want to turn that into a dynamic filter, done. Look at that. So dope. So that spectrum grab thing is actually super cool and again, very, very useful. And there's one other quick thing I want to show you that's actually really cool. There's a little keyboard down here. And if I click that, you can actually see the keyboard down here. And this kind of goes along with the spectrum grab thing. Let's say I'm working on a bass line and I want to attenuate, you know, one note of the bass. The bass was just really cranking out, uh, you know, a G3, for example. I hover over the G3 here and double click. It's going to put a filter node 
in the frequency position of the G3. And now I can, you know, attenuate it, adjust my Q value, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, this is just a kind of an extra thing down here. I'm not sure how often I'll be using it, but knowing that it's there is definitely something you want to do. So, I mean, beyond that, we've got zero latency, natural phase, linear phase, great algorithms inside of here. Of course, you've got your EQ matching feature, which works the same way as it did in the Pro-Q2. I've already done a video for that here on Plugin Boutique's channel if you're interested in checking it out. And that's just kind of scratching the surface of what is new and what's improved inside of the Pro-Q3. But hopefully I'll be able to do some future tutorials on specific things to do with the Pro-Q3 instead of this kind of general overview. But I'm very excited about it and I want to share my thoughts with you just as soon as possible. So of course, if you wanna download it, you wanna check it out. If you want more information, there's links in the video description. I highly suggest doing it. Pro-Q3 is going to be you know, it's the tail end of 2018, but it's probably going to be 2019's biggest equalizer release. So definitely check it out while the getting's good. Anyway, I'm Joshua Casper here for Plugin Boutique. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.